Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking how can we use Sysmon to track the creation of the different components that make up a WMI permanent event. Those components are going to be the filter, the consumer, and the binder. Uh, we're going to be tracking each one of those with event 19, 20, and 21. So when it comes to the filter, the filter is a WMI query that runs and it's constantly monitoring the CMON database in the case that an instance gets created, modified, deleted, or in the case that we're working through a provider, which is an extrinsic event, it's going to execute immediately when something happens. Those are kernel debugging methods that are available to us via WMI for the instance, the loading of a DLL, the creation of process, termination of process. Now, when it comes to WMI database, it almost everything inside of Windows is represented inside of the WMI database. So we can take actions by event logs. We can take action for sys services. We can take action for when a network interface gets an IP address. We can take actions many, many, many ways, different ways available to us right there. Now, the consumer, since given that this was created in 1998, 1999. It started with Windows 95 and then around Windows 2000, I think is where we got permanent events inside of WMI. Uh, so since it's very old, the only two types of consumers that we have available to us is Microsoft has not updated. The capabilities there is for command line execution. In addition to that, we also have Windows scripting host, either BB script or J script. So we still, we can take quite a bit of action just using those two. Then what we do is we bind them together. So we create a binding object. Now the binding object, we can use whichever consumer and whichever binder we have available in the system and we just join them together. That means that just by having a couple of filters and a couple of consumers, we can make a series of different combinations. Now, attackers like APT29, as covered by Nick Carr and Dunwoody uh, in their presentation at Derricon called No EC Breach, uh, where they were trying to eradicate and extradite or just get out of that network, APT29. Um, one of the things that that actor was actually doing is that he was using double mind permanent events for persistence inside of the environment. Not only were they using double mind permanent event for persistence, but in addition to that, they were using it to hide from the insert response team as they were being hunted because all of a sudden they knew that they were looking for those, but they didn't want to lose that capability. So one of the things that they actually did was that they modified existing ones. Now, double mind permanent events is one of those things that, to be honest, they're not created often. They're not modified often. So that means that we should just capture them all. So let's go over to the VM and check. So as you can see here in the VM, one of the things that we can do is we just do look for double mind event, and then we just simply create an exclude. By just creating an exclude, we're going to capture all of them. I've already applied this to this machine. So let's go over here to my example. So here I have in PowerShell ISC, I'm going to create a filter, which is going to be under root subscription. This filter is going to look for the instance creation within every two seconds where the target instance is a win32 underscore volume and the drive type is number two. So that's going to be a removable one. So when somebody connects a USB drive. So let's create this specific filter inside of the SIM database. I'm applying it here. Now let's use PS Gumshoe to get Sysmon. Dumble in my filter. And here we have the instance. One of the things that you're going to notice, I don't have a process ID. I don't have a process GUID. The only thing I have as in terms of reference of who created this is the user. That's the only piece of information that I have for hunting as to who created this. I cannot track which specific process under which specific session this actually happened. Here we see operation created. In the case of modification, this is going to change to modify. In the case of a deletion, it's going to be deleted. So we can actually track through the entire life cycle of the event. Again, filter event ID 19. Now let's create our consumer. So our consumer is going to be in this case, command line execution. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to run a command that is going to echo hello into a text file called txt, test txt. I'll learn my lesson of not doing weird stuff to my VMs because then I pay for it at the end. So I'm going to run this and then I'm going to go get sysmon double my consumer. And here we have where the consumer was created on the machine. Again, the only thing we get is that what was the user, we get operation created. Now we also get the type of consumer here under event ID 20. I'm getting that this is a command line instead of Windows scripting host. So all of a sudden, now I know this instead of a script. Type script will be for Windows scripting host. I'm gonna go over here and then I'm going to bind them together. Bind them together. And here we can see that it was created. We have the consumer and the filter that we bind it together under this single object. And it was created and everything's under event ID number 21. Now, you're gonna go, awesome, I'm fully covered. This is great. Well, a good attacker, one of the things that he can do to bypass this is not create it under root subscription. Instead, he creates it under root. By creating under root, Sysmon's not going to be able to see it now on a Windows host. Thankfully, we also have a modern versions of, of Windows. We have the WMI operational. So under WMI activity, operational, one of the things that we're going to see here is that that binding was actually tracked for us. Now, one of the things that we're not going to be able to see when we're using WMI operation is if it was a modification that happened here. Uh, same thing, it was a deletion. It, they all look the same when it comes to WMI operational, but WMI operational gives me other events. For example, I'm going to include links to some of my blog posts when it comes to WMI activity tracking. And one of the things that we're able to do with WMI operational is that we can look for errors in WMI queries. We can look for providers that get added inside of WMI in addition to tracking the different components being created inside of the database. So that gives us kind of a bit of redundancy. My recommendation is use both in your environment to have that redundancy between both of them because an attacker will probably see sysmon and will try to disable sysmon and forget to disable double mi activity as they're taking actions on that box as always i hope that you found this information useful and i'll see you guys on the next video awesome